Hi there, and welcome to Ian's Engage channel. I'm Ian. In a previous video, I shared how I intended to create a scenic breakboard to hide the small fiddle yard on Shelfington. In this video, I'm going to begin laying form on the baseboard so I can begin putting my track plan to the test. In its final guise, Shelfington will be built on several levels, but for initial testing, it's going to be built all on one level. I chose 60mm as that is the highest level the track will rise to on the final layout, and I had plenty of foam that allowed me to build it up to that height. I decided to take into account the scenic breakboard and left space for it to be installed all the way along to where Shelfington Reservoir will eventually be located. I began by installing the first layer of foam that would be located behind the scenic breakboard. This was 30mm in height and would extend all along the back wall of the train room. Eventually it would be increased to a height of 60mm after the second layer was added. The foam had already been cut to size and I decided to glue it down using Gorilla Wood Glue. Once in place, the pieces were weighted down with pretty much anything that was heavy that I had to hand, or could find in my kitchen cupboard. Weighing the foam down was going to become a problem eventually, as I ran out of convenient weighty items. So as I added foam in front of where the scenic breakboard would be, I took a different approach. Here, the first layer was going to be 20mm thick, and I decided to screw it down while the glue dried. I then removed the screws afterwards. The method I used was to mark around the form so I knew where to place the glue and then ran beads of the glue throughout the marked area. Next I drilled 3mm pilot holes through the form and into the baseboard before driving in some M4 30mm wood screws, being careful not to go too far into the form. This method seemed to keep the form securely in position while the glue went off and meant I didn't have to raid my already bare kitchen cupboards any further for heavy items. I continued with this method until I'd completed the first layer of foam. As you can see from this clip, I also added foam to implement one of the triangular fillet sections that overhung the baseboard. The second layer of foam was only going to be temporary, so it would only need to be secured with long pins. I inserted the pins at an angle along the front and right hand edges of each top layer of foam into the lower layer so that there was less chance of the foam moving should it get knocked. I used a combination of 40mm and 30mm foam to bring the heights up to 60mm across the whole baseboard, ending up with what you can see here. In this clip you can see that I have now added the second triangular fillet section that overhangs the baseboard. I had been hoping that this would have been sturdy enough to get away without having to support it, but I think I'll have to add some wooden buttons beneath it just to be on the safe side. You may also have noticed that I've mocked up the scenic breakboard to its full extent and have cut portals into the, hopefully, correct positions. Actually, this was now getting quite exciting, as I was now in a position where I could start thinking about laying some track in order to test my track plan. But that was at least another video or three away. Well, that's about it for this small update. If you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in Engage Modelling, or if you simply want to say hello, then please do so in the comments section. Anything and everything you've got to say will be greatly appreciated. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another update sometime soon. Bye.